thank you parents for taking time to watch this uh, parent orientation makeup uh, training session. And so I know that you have a busy schedule and I thank you for taking time out of your schedule to watch this. Um, we wouldn't require parent orientation if we didn't consider it to be something important. Uh, we really um, appreciate and uh, desire a good working relationship with our parents and that's why we want to take time to share with you things that um, we believe are going to be important to you as a parent and helpful to you. I'm going to try to uh, keep things moving along in this makeup orientation so I don't think it'll be uh, quite as long as the general session that we had at the orientation on uh, Thursday of last week. Uh, thank you for your patience in waiting for me to put this together. Uh, my schedule is really busy right now given that I'm uh, uh, teaching the fifth and sixth grade until we have our new teacher arrive and I'll give a an update on him in just a little bit. Uh, so I know it's towards the end of the first week of school and I was just looking for an opportunity where I had some time uh, to put this uh, training video together. Uh, so again, uh, the parent orientation is a required uh, event and we do that because there's a, a number of new things that are gonna be in here. And so if you were thinking that it's just the same as last year, uh, that's not the case. Uh, in fact, I was counting the number of things that are new and it, it's a little over a third of the things that I'm sharing with you today uh, that are actually uh, some sort of change or update or brand new uh, from last year. And I'm not sure I've always given that um, impression. I think some just think it's the same every year. Um, I know I had one uh, parent um, tell me that they were going to be gone. They caught me a couple days uh, before school in the office and told me that they were gonna be gone and asked me if it's the same as last year. And I, um, I didn't really give a good answer at that time uh, because my brain wasn't in gear for thinking about parent orientation. But I, I did um, just simply answer that a lot of the things are the same, um, which is true, but I should have given a more complete answer on that. In fact, I caught the other parent in the family who I happened to bump into later that week and clarified uh, for them uh, that I, I thought I had um, given the wrong impression and the parent probably assumed that I maybe had excused them. Uh, from it, but that wasn't the intention. I just gave a, a kind of a poor or incomplete answer. So uh, I'm glad that you're watching this video if you weren't able to make it. And the uh, the makeup orientation fee that we charge, the, the main purpose behind that, um, I don't want people to assume that we're just trying to get money out of people. It's, it's really the accountability and the motivation for coming uh, to the event. And uh, last year, it, first time we've done it um, in many years, uh, that, that fee. Um, last year it worked out really well. We had only two families that didn't come to the event, but for some reason we have a larger number this year. So um, we're hoping again that that's a motivation because if you didn't come to the parent orientation, uh, you did miss out on things. Even watching this orientation video, you don't have all the information you may need because I don't have a good way of duplicating everything that took place, especially uh, the teacher orientations in the classroom. So even if you picked up a packet, you didn't get everything. Uh, for example, in my fifth and sixth grade class, we connected live with Slava Starikov, who's going to be coming, uh, we hope in November, and uh, be our fifth and sixth grade teacher. And so our parents had a, an opportunity to um, hear him, and we talked with him uh, probably for about 10 minutes. Uh, he shared um, some about himself and his background, and, and um, I gave parents opportunity to ask questions if they had any. And so I was glad for our parents to get to know him. And I think that, um, I think that went really well. And, and um, I got good feedback uh, from parents regarding being able to see that, but I don't have a good way of duplicating that right now. So that's just one example. Uh, but I know our teachers went over uh, various things in the classroom. So we're hoping that you can um, connect with teachers and, and be caught up to speed. And we'll do our best with this training video to uh, go along uh, those same lines and help uh, to catch you up. All right, so let me go ahead and get started then uh, with some of the things that we have uh, going on. And again, I'm just going to try to fly through these to keep the video from becoming too long. And so um, let me know if anything was too much on the brief side and you end up with any questions regarding any of these topics, we can follow up uh, with you. Um, so I uh, wanted to give you a, an update on our staffing. I already mentioned that uh, Mr. Slava Starikov uh, will probably not be here till November. 
and uh, so we're just working through the immigration process, but we're really excited for um, what we believe uh, he's going to bring to the table uh, just with his uh, training, uh, his heart, his, um, his good uh, rapport with people, his uh, you know, speaking and teaching style. We think that uh, that's going to be a real asset uh, to the school, and so we're looking forward to him coming. But we, we are going through the immigration process, and there uh, has been some delay with our immigration attorneys uh, because the case manager uh, stepped aside. Um, in the middle of the process, which slowed things down. But we're back on track and think things are going smoothly. Um, we haven't run into problems as far as you know, getting um, the permissions from the government to bring him in, but it is just a process, and so that's coming along well. And then our church is looking for a pastor. I don't think that really directly affects our school um, in a big way, um, but uh, Pastor uh, Brent last year, um, his main role in the school is helping out in the chapels, and so uh, we will miss that presence and then just him being around. Uh, but beyond that, he wasn't teaching any classes and wasn't uh, directly overseeing uh, anything in particular regarding the school. So I think his absence will have a minimal impact, and we're able to fill in uh, for the few things that he was doing. So that's just a, a quick uh, staffing update. All right, well, let me go through uh, some things that were um, on our schedule that were um, kind of on the newer side. Uh, we did add um, a number of uh, things to the calendar, and I think I sent out an update on that. Uh, that includes uh, three different um, uh, dates where that affect the elementary and upper grade uh, choir uniform distributions. And so we went ahead and put that on the map. There'll be times where the kids are getting uh, fittings and then receiving uh, outfits and getting them back again. And there um, also was a handout uh, given, although I have to confess with my fifth and sixth graders, I, I still need to get that handout uh, to you. So it wasn't in the packet yet, but I'll be um, getting that. Um, so uh, look for that on the calendar. And then uh, besides that, we did change one thing on the calendar, which is uh, the parent-teacher fellowship meetings. We're gonna try those right after school this year. So at 3.15, um, look for the, the first date on the calendar. I don't have that date in front of me, but I believe it's September 14th. Uh, but look for that on there. We would love to have you join us at the parent-teacher fellowship meetings. Again, we're going to do it at 3.15 after school rather than in the evening. And um, our uh, PTF officers are thinking that that might uh, work out better and, and increase the number of people that are able to come. And so we do have extended care uh, during that time, so even uh, children could have a, a place to go and someone to watch them if babysitting was keeping you away. All right, um, let's see what else we have going on. <clears throat> um, we are uh, this year requiring, so this again is a new thing, we're requiring uh, competition. Um, so this would be um, grades four and up. And we're doing that because um, it's, uh, well, one, it's an important event. We think this is really a, a benefit. And we're gonna provide uh, transportation uh, to and from the event, but the fourth through sixth graders have a one-day competition in Stockton, and the upper grades have a two-day competition in Santa Maria. Almost all the students already went to these events, but we had a small number left behind, and just the difficulty of um, ha having someone stay behind and try to come up with a program and curriculum for the day for those that are behind um, to avoid that. Um, would be a, a good thing because then our staff can be fully invested uh, in the event. And then also um, just um, having the kids uh, participate and benefit from the academic and fine arts event. This is put together by our Christian School Association uh, here in California, uh, GSACS we call it, uh, which stands for the Golden State Association of Christian Schools. And so we're looking forward to that. Uh, the elementary fee is $30, that will include um, a meal uh, there, the lunch meal, and then it'll include transportation. And uh, they would just need money to um, like fast food dinner on the way home. Um, if you would like to help with events like this in transportation, um, let us know. There are forms to fill out if you're helping with field trips or driving to events like competition and uh, chaperone agreements. And so our office has copies of those. and. Uh, so please come by and fill those out at your earliest convenience. It would be nice to have those forms filled out and a copy of your driver's license on file if you're driving. 
ahead of the event rather than trying to tackle that in the morning of the event. All right, um, I'm um, asked to relay, if you have financial questions, that Bernadette Leonard in the office will be the main person to field those questions. If you could reach out to her directly rather than reaching out um, to our bookkeeper, my wife, Stacy, uh, that would be better because uh, Bernadette's the kind of the person that's fielding those questions and is the person that uh, takes those questions and relays them out to me or to our bookkeeper or to someone else uh, and figures out who's the person to answer that. So go to her first, if you would, please. Um, one uh, handbook change update. Um, our handbook had, um, had in it as part of the uniform code uh, leggings and tights, and we're just uh, going to the tights only. And so the leggings has been dropped on that. So I'm gonna give you an FYI, especially before the cold uh, time arrives. And uh, for the younger girls, especially the girls that are gonna be um, playing on playground equipment, um, we ask that they wear shorts underneath their skirts. If they're wearing a skirt or a jumper, um, that they wear shorts under there for modesty as they're sometimes hanging upside down. Uh, that would be um, a required thing for those uh, kids. All right, something that's new in the upper grades uh, is the use of Class Dojo. We have used that uh, computer app in the lower grades and thought it worked well, so we're using it school-wide now. If you have not yet connected with your child's class uh, via Class Dojo, uh, please uh, do so. I think most of you have probably connected by now as that was um, in the packet that was handed out uh, to families. All right. Um, if you're going to be taking advantage of our extended care, uh, please fill out an extended care agreement card, and we have those in the office. Um, and uh, also, uh, regarding extended care, but also just um, picking up kids from school, please let us know if there's someone who's authorized uh, to pick up your child uh, other than yourself, and we need that in writing there in the office. And even if you provided that last year, we still need you to reaffirm uh, that um, that is uh, still valid. And also let us know if uh, the person being authorized is authorized just on a particular date or are they authorized to pick up at any time. All right, so let me get over here. So then I wanted to clarify one thing that is not new, but we've had questions about, and that's the $50 sports fee. Uh, that shows up on our fees list and so we do charge fifty dollars for the upper grades when the child's involved in sports that's fifty dollars per season uh, so this year we're going to have three uh, seasons we have a smaller group in the upper grades so we're looking at doing uh, co-ed uh, in the three sports that's volleyball flag football and basketball uh, but the reason for charging the fifty dollar fee is that that covers the expenses um, in fact it doesn't even cover all the expenses um, so the major expenses are paying referees to ref the games, uh, gym rental, and then the uh, uniforms. Uh, the $50 fee helps cover the uniforms. The child doesn't get a brand new uniform uh, every uh, season. Well, that'd be because the $50 would just cover the uniform only. There'd be nothing left over for uh, referees and gym rentals. Um, but as the child either outgrows the uniform or the uniform starts to wear out, they would get a replacement one as they continue to be on the team. And of course, if they lose the uniform or uh, abuse it in some way, they would have to pay for a replacement uh, separate from the $50 fee. Uh, but that's basically what it is, um, pay to play. And uh, again, it, we don't make money off the uh, sports program. We actually um, don't uh, pay for the entire thing through the $50 fee, but at least it offsets the cost of those things. Okay, um, our lost and found has a, um, a new location. It's right uh, next to the sports shed, um, right next to the fifth and sixth grade classroom, which is room six. And so uh, look there if your child has any lost and found clothing. Please put um, your initials on uh, their items. And so I know this first week of school, I. Uh, found a lost and found item and hey it had a name inside and so that helped out a lot we knew who right uh, who to give that back to and so please do that type of thing that would be very helpful um, we will be sending out a sh uh, sweatshirt order form sometime here in September and um, so be on the lookout for that and if your child would like a school um, sweatshirt uh, we'll be placing that order soon 
it's a one-time order, so we don't place those orders throughout the year. It has to be a bulk order. We have a minimum number that we have to order, so uh, think about whether you're going to want one. Um, and that could be uh, not only for the kids, but it could be for parents or others who might want a Calvary Christian School sweatshirt. All right, um, let's see. Yeah, just check with the office if you have any other questions regarding uh, uniforms. All right, one thing that we ask you is could you please uh, be sure to drive slowly around the campus. It is in a residential area with a 25 mile per hour speed limit. And um, every year I get um, at least one call uh, from neighbors who uh, complain about some speeding going on that they say is our own parents. And I'm not out there myself observing because um, I'm working at the school, but um, I don't know if, uh, you know, to what extent they know for sure it's our own parents um, or uh, to what extent, you know, they're accurate or if they're just exaggerating. But um, I do know that, um, you know, we just need to do our best. And I know that uh, we have neighbors that are convinced that we are sometimes a problem and they um, sometimes find it to be a nuisance. Uh, so we don't want to wear out our welcome in the neighborhood and would ask you to cooperate on that. All right, uh, Mrs. Reed uh, has the morning extended care and she gets here as early as 7 a.m. If you're going to be taking advantage of the morning extended care, could you please communicate with her? Of course, we need that extended care agreement card, uh, but let her know, especially if you're getting here on the early side, um, if she thinks that she has no students, she may come in 7, 7, 7.05, 7.10, um, I wouldn't want you to be sitting out there waiting, expecting that she's here. Um, but she usually gets here at 7 uh, regardless. Uh, but that would be very helpful uh, to her. And if you um, want to meet with a parent, could you please do that in a private uh, meeting rather than catching, I'm sorry, I said parent, <laughs> well, with a teacher, if you would like a parent-teacher conference. Um, we would love to meet with you. In fact, at the end of the first quarter, we had set aside uh, time in our schedule for parent conferences. Um, but um, you don't have to wait until parent-teacher conferences. Uh, we want to work with you, and, um, and we want to uh, be a help to you. And so just let us know. But could you do our teachers a favor? Don't catch them at pick-up and drop-off time and try to have a parent uh, conference at that time. Um, many times what we're talking with parents about uh, is on the more confidential side, um, discussing grades or discuss discussing behavior or if you as a parent um, have some sort of concern. And that's um, not the best time because you're right there with kids standing around and other families. And so we ask you to schedule that appointment um, with our uh, teachers at a different time. And um, let's see. All right. Be sure if you're ever visiting the campus that you check in at the office first. There are visitor name badges that you pick up there and then uh, any teacher that sees you knows that you've uh, checked in. Um, if you could make sure you get your kids here on time and that they're here regularly. Um, attendance is important for the success of the child. We do see uh, children uh, suffer from uh, lack of attendance. We see their grades drop and not uh, do well. And so attendance is um, important and study after study has shown uh, this to be the case. It's also required by state law. Um, if you could help with uh, tardiness um, to avoid that. A child who comes in tardy, a uh, difficulty is that the other kids have already sit, uh, put their things away, uh, got themselves set up, and then a child comes in late. Uh, the teacher's already going on something else, and now the teacher might have to pause, help that child get set up, put their things away, try to catch up to where they're at. And it is disruptive. And uh, children who are absent, it does cause extra workload on the teachers. And so I really ask you to try to avoid that. I know that sometimes there are life events that are unavoidable, and I'm not speaking of the life events uh, such as sicknesses. I'm, I'm speaking of life events such as maybe like a family reunion or um, something like that. Um, we understand it's not that we would, you know, want parents to never have those things, but um, if at all possible, if you can avoid them uh, uh, happening during school, that would be really important. 
And I think sometimes we could avoid them, but we just choose not to. And I'm just letting you know, it does cause extra work on our teachers. It, it can be uh, disruptive uh, to what's going on in the classroom um, because they have to set time aside to try to make up for that. And then the child themselves often has a difficulty making up what's there. They might make up the assignments, but there's no way to make up uh, the education that they're missing, the explanations and the practice that the teacher's giving uh, to the students. And so I'd really like to emphasize that. Um, if you have um, an absence that you uh, are requesting, remember that there's a pre-approved absence policy in our handbook and um, the school is the one that makes the decision, um, and I myself as principal, on whether that will be an excused absence or not. So just because a family requests an excused absence doesn't mean that it's going to automatically be excused. And that would especially be the case if a family has had um, excessive absences. Um, so I think we have a certain responsibility legally uh, not to be just uh, excusing students from school um, excessively. And so I don't have the freedom to uh, do that. Uh, there's a legal obligation on my part to make sure kids are here. But it goes beyond the, the legal. Again, we care about how the kids are doing. And so we ask for your cooperation um, regarding that. And so please help us uh, there. Try to avoid asking for time off as much as possible. All right, let me just look here. I think we just have a few things left. Maybe not. Okay, I think I'm to the end here and have touched the major thing. Um, now, when I spoke at the parent orientation, um, I went um, a little bit longer than this, although we kept the meeting shorter this year. And so I talked for about 45 minutes in the general session and then dismissed um, our families to go back and speak uh, with our teachers in the classrooms and get further orientation there. So um, your teachers have uh, various projects, activities, um, there's classroom procedures, and so um, we'll do our best to try to catch you up to speed on those, and we're hoping that things go really well this year. Um, so we're um, very much appreciative of our parents, and we look forward to working with you, and I hope that we have um, a good school year. And stop by the office if you have any questions. Um, please understand um, here at the start, because I'm teaching fifth and sixth grade, my availability as a principal is more limited um, here in the start um, because I'm focusing on that fifth and sixth grade class and we want that to go really well. Um, so if you would have a little patience um, regarding that, that would be much appreciated. Um, we're looking forward to our school theme this year. It's 1 Corinthians 10.31, uh, which says, Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. So our theme is For God's Glory. So looking forward to sharing that theme and, and having a spiritual impact on your children. Um, so Calvary Christian School exists um, you know, with that uh, thought in mind. Um, it's more than just academics, getting a chance to help your kids with character growth and uh, spiritual growth and encouraging them. And so we look forward to partnering with you in that. And uh, let us know if we can ever be a help or assistance to you. All right, uh, thanks again for uh, watching this training video. Take care and have a good day. Bye now.